And here we have the um, Typhoon Bayraktar on the top versus Eren Uysal on the bottom. And we actually pre-recorded the deck profile with Drake, uh, with Draco Slayer and Typhoon. He showed yeah. us what the deck can do. He showed us the new cards and everything. And therefore, he, we wanted to get him onto the feature match stage for sure to show us in practice what that deck is capable yeah. to do. And now he is special summoning the Kashira Fenrir. What a great card that was introduced in Darkwing Blast. Such a generic card. And this card is actually not even a brick in this deck because uh, Back in the day with old pendulums, right? When you wanted, or not even old pendulums, with Electromite pendulums, you want to say, you had to summon two pendulum monsters on the field. But now the link to pendulum support monster beyond the pendulum, beyond the pendulum let me get it up, just requires one pendulum monster and one other Ooh. effect monster. And Kashira Fenrir nice. replaces itself and then can be pendulum summoned out. True, that's really cool because normally you struggle to get out a second one that you exactly. searched out, but now you can in this deck even pendulum yeah. summon it out. That's really, really cool. And now we are going for Luster Pendulum, the Draco Slayer. Absolutely. And we resolved the uh, Odd Ice Revolution Dragon first of all. Yeah. It's already in the graveyard. And we see that there is Dimension Shifter being chained by Aaron Oisal. That's and, tough. And we already can nail down what kind of decks he could play from that activation yeah. alone. And you can already see on the screen that he is on the Axel Sister deck. That's not a deck that Typhoon necessarily prepared for, I would say. No, but on the true. other hand, Aaron probably didn't prepare for Pendulums either. So <laughs> that's an equal match in that regard. Yeah, I mean, the Exo Sisters thrive on summons from the GY. And uh, Pendulums don't really care about that too much. I mean, there are some routes in this deck where you go over Dynamite, actually. I'm going to bring him up for you guys to summon monsters back from the graveyard. But you can kind of avoid that. Also, Kashtira Fenrir is just really chill against the deck. Like you really Oh, but look at that! Yeah, of course. That is pretty, pretty decent. He had to pass it over yeah. to Aaron, and Aaron started off with a powerful pot of prosperity. And the thing is, we see in Typhoon's hand, and also in his deck list, he decided to run a pretty decent bestial package. And those bestials are, are not really game changers versus Exorcist, are they? No, that is something you really want to side out versus them, because even if, I mean, you can banish the Dimension Shifter, First card of the top of the deck is Exorcist and Marfar, and I mean, that's the card you want to see there. I'm pretty sure he's going with Marfar because his board is empty, and Marfar would be a pretty chill way to actually change yep. that. So Marfar can be special summoned out. Can't be banished by Fenrir because it activates in hand. Will special summon another monster, but then if you go for your rank 4 exceeds, Fenrir is actually quite good to banish the card. It is. I mean, it could be an aggressive play by Typhon Byraktar to just instantly book yeah. one of the two monsters, either book the Marta or the banished. other monster he's... Uh, yeah, yeah, that book. It's, it's banished face down. That's oh, why yeah. I was oh. thinking book, but yeah, <laughs> okay. it's actually being banished face down. So he could get rid of one monster, so that would be a potential denial of an XYZ yeah. summon. On the other hand, no, we no, know he... that Exorcist is... He can just normal he, summon he another Exorcist monster. can't anything right now. Why not? Martha activated in hand. Yeah, but Fenrir activates on Resolve, and that's what oh, he right. does. He actually just activates the effect of Kashtira Fenrir to banish the Martha. But if Eren now has another monster to normal summon, and he does, of course, there is another Exorcist that he just instantly brings to the field. So I don't think that effect of Fenrir did too much there, to be honest. Nope, not at all, because Eren can play out his combo here, which means go for an XYZ, probably banish a card, and then search for another one. We're going into Mikaelis first of all. And one really cool thing that I see in the list of Eren is that he's actually main decking Ishizu cards. He's playing triple Keldo, triple Mudora. I'm wondering, is that just in case you play versus the Ishizu tier deck and they mill you, so you actually get some so. value off of that as well? Because as soon as your opponent sees that you're playing a deck such as Exorcists, which doesn't profit off of mills usually, they will always yeah. resolve their Kelbacks, they will always resolve their Agidos, so that would actually be a pretty smart move to then also have cards to, to counter that. I mean, we have already seen some deck lists that have just completely cut out on Kelbacks and Agidos, maybe playing, playing like one or two of those. Yeah. So this would actually backfire at this point. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody is even playing the Millers anymore and you're <laughs> sitting there with the Shufflers that actually don't do a whole lot in your deck. But now Mikaelis is banishing the Draco Slayer and we have one set card, two set cards for Eren. That's pretty good. And let's appreciate the Sky Striker Mobilize Engage sleeves I that Eren is using. Yes. Just brought to us in a TCG via Magnificent Mavens. They look beautiful. He's not playing Striker. 
but still, they work with an Exorcist deck just as well. That is true, and now we are going to see a Kashira Fenrir being summoned again, and I mean, the Mikhailis doesn't have the quick effect to banish something anymore, so this is actually really good. Yeah, that's quite Fenrir a big monster, is honestly. Is still really strong. Yeah. Because right. it always replaces itself, and also the Bestials are not too bad. I think it's only Druid Swarm and two Pendulum Monsters in Hand of Typhoon. Yeah, the thing is, I can already tell you that Fenrir on the field right there is not going to replace itself because he is only on two Fenrirs oh. in total. So he already maxed out on both of them, searched the second one in the first turn, and now does not have access to another one. But there is Exorcist Returnia, Returnia. being activated by Aaron. Paying life points, and that could instantly just get rid of the Fenrir. Yeah, but he's chaining even after that. Oh, he has both Exorcist traps. He has Exorcist Returnia and Vardis right here. So he is not fooling around. He's just instantly shotgunning both of them into his opponent here. But there is the Druid's Womb being chained on, Exos uh, on <laughs> Exorcist <laughs> Shifter. No, Dimension Shifter, of course. <laughs> when you're looking at Exorcist decks, you can't think that it is Exorcist Shifter, to be honest. Or Fluwandery Shifter. Yeah, Fluwandery Shifter would also be very fitting, indeed. So Vardis and Returnia, the absolute combo. Because I think after Returnia resolves, or yeah, you can exceed summon a monster. So if you chain those in the right way, you actually get a free exceed summon. And the turn these exceeds monsters are summoned, they are pretty powerful. Yep, that's the whole concept of the deck. Usually this is pretty rough going second, but due to the Dimension Shifter resolving, that was actually quite neat for him because his opponent passed on a very mediocre board, just consisting out yeah. of one singular Fenry. So, oh, and Necro Valley in Hand of Typhoon is really not the card that he wants to see. That's indeed true. He drew some of the cards that are really powerful versus Ishizu Tielemans, but in this specific matchup, we, we talked about it. He yeah. has not prepared for Exorcist, of course. He was prepared to Big play mistake. Ishizu Tielemans all day long, but no, yeah, here he sits facing the Draco Slayer, uh, facing the Exorcist deck of Eren, and he's just trying to run over the Mikaelis now with the Jury Swarm. Yeah, so that makes sense because when he crashes into the first one, Druid's Womb can activate in the GY and send the second Mikhailis in damage step. Nothing to be activated for this year. So maybe Typhoon actually still has a chance because he has Luster Pendulum. Wow, it wasn't even banished with a quick effect. Yeah. Typhoon actually might have a shot in here if these two cards are enough for him to combo off. Two cards left in hand besides the Necro Valley. We know that Necro Valley is not going to help him combo, and we see a pass from Typhoon. Mm. There's nothing coming from him here. Back to Aaron, who may be able to get those 6,650 life points wow. out of it because there's also Exorcist Martha being the first card activated again <laughs> this turn as well. He summons out Elise. And I'm pretty confident that Aaron would be able to actually put up enough damage. But Exorcist deck can struggle with that, but I think we might we may see a rare occurrence of actually going for a, uh, going for game here in this turn. I mean, what can he possibly do? He can go for Mikhailis again. He can search out packs, no? Yeah, indeed, he can search out packs. So uh, search out packs. And that's probably what he's going to do because you you want to go for another exceed summon here, quite likely. And you already went through. Both of your traps. Let me check how many he's playing. Double. Oh, he's going. He's going yeah. for return. I mean, I mean, what does Pax do realistically here? Mm. It's, it searches out one monster, and you don't have another one in hand. I think. Two. Oh, he, he does have no more monsters in hand. However, so he just goes battle phase. I was I was too hyped about it already. He does not have a way to actually seal the game right here. So he just sets himself up having Returnia and his Mikaelis on board. And Typhoon is absolutely being patient here. He said, maybe I can do something with my two cards in hand. And now he's searching for, he draws Purple Poison. And this card can actually make a difference. Let me just check Returnia again. Because... Let's return to the card text all of monsters you control Returnia. are Exorcist monsters. So if he activates Purple Poison and Luster Pendulum... Go ahead, yeah. Then you can pop the purple poison and destroy the Mikhailis. Returnia will have to be activated on the Luster Pendulum. Oh, earlier. there it is. We see purple poison. That was his top deck for turn. And there is the Luster Pendulum as well, as you were just anticipating. And I think he, he let him activate the. I mean, that, that's the, the correct timing, right? So you now chain Returnia, ah. and finish a card. Thing is. 
Aaron actually being down in life points quite a bit because yeah. <laughs> he keeps on paying for those uh, trap effects. So he's already down to um, 5,500, and I don't even know whether the uh, effect of this return here is already included with that. Yeah, no, it was not. 4,950 for Aaron even. So if Typhoon actually gets to summon out some of his big monsters and Pendulum decks do have the tendency to summon out big monsters, then we might see him going for game in this turn here. So he special summons out. Okay, I was again Ooh. hoping for too much. Typhoon only summons out the Draco Can Slayer. Can we check Typhoon's list for a second, please? Sure, what do you want to know? I want to know how many Dynamite Power Loads he plays. He plays three. Okay. He's playing three copies of it, yeah. But he's not seen any of his powerful starters. He has not seen Bunbuku, for example. So he has not seen any Draco Slayer card besides the one that just sits there in scale. So not really the opening he was hoping for. So he had to summon Luster Pendulum in order and to there's not packs now get for Aaron. his life points reduced to zero this turn. Which is unfortunate because he's already at a pretty big disadvantage. Yep, Typhoon on 5k. I mean, Exorcista should be able to actually get 5,000 damage on board in one turn, right? And we're going for the Martha again. <laughs> and, and Typhoon, yeah, Typhoon has enough. enough. He is not going to win this game one anymore. And therefore, Aaron, actually the underdog in this scenario yeah. right here, is going to take game one due to a very well-timed dimension shifter. And he is actually one game up against the big Typhoon by Rakta. And honestly, we saw the score of the two players. They already lost round number one. So losing here for Typhoon might be very, yeah. very, very crucial. Might be already a, a very bad sign for him for the that's tournament. That's true. I mean, that's the worst start you can have, yeah, actually. Indeed. So, uh, but it, I mean, honestly, the one time you don't want to draw Necro Valley in this tournament is versus Exorcista. It's, it's literally versus Exo. Yep. And yet you still draw it. And it hurts your combo. I mean, he only plays three spells, I think, and those are all yep. uh, field spells. No, I think he's playing Dynamite. I mean, power Dynamite. The Dynamite Surge continues. Charge. Spell. Dynamite Charge. Charge. Yeah, charge. And I mean, Sky Iris. They, a lot of his monsters are pseudo spells by being pendulum cards, right? So they are half spell cards. I think they, they are full spells. They, they, all right. they are. You can count them as spell cards any time of the week. That's what I would be thinking as well, for sure. But Probably yeah. not, though. Um, one very interesting thing that Typhoon is going to be able to do with his side deck is that he could now include Artifact Dacta, Artifact Scythe, and Elder Entity Antis into his main deck. Because you talked to him specifically yeah. before the deck profile. And he told you, yeah, this does lose to the Bestials because you can just get the... Um, what is he getting out of the graveyard? The, the Antis, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. It, it has to be the Antis, I think. Yeah, he's getting out the Entis and then making Dweller with Entis and then detaching Entis to pop his own Scythe. Scythe. Oh no, so you, you can just banish the Scythe. Never yeah. mind. Yeah, oh, yeah, that as well. But you lose to uh, you lose with Droplet if you're in the Telemans player's shoes in this scenario. Which yeah, because, because one because of them will exorcista. always resolve, yeah. basically. Exactly. Dweller or Scythe will always resolve. Yeah, this yeah, is pretty yeah. neat. However, I don't think this is uh, too good versus Exorcist because you also don't want to Dweller them. But you could go for another rank four, maybe. Yeah, but what, what is detaching? Yeah, it's well, kind of How many rough. rank fours is rough. he even playing? Let me see. It's Dweller, it's uh, Baguska, but that's not really detaching anything. So it's rough. Probably not even oh, going to be yeah. able Magista, to pull that combo Magista off. can't beat. I think Magista needs... On the other hand, though, monsters. if you could actually pull off that Scythe combo, that's still a pretty valid win condition versus Exorcist. It so is. It might, it is, of yeah. course, Dweller isn't great, but it might still be the way to go, even though you're putting up a useless Dweller, useless, because that Exorcist deck is not necessarily working with the Graveyard, as we know. But looking at the side deck of Aaron Uysal, I don't know when I saw for the last time nine trap cards in his side deck, but Aaron is bringing nine trap cards in his side deck. He's actually bringing some heavy going first cards. He's bringing in Destructive Daruma Cannon, which yeah. I love. That's a very new card, and it's really, really nice. And Triple Solemn Judgment. And that as well. Why yeah. don't we just go over and see? I mean, he will probably not cite them now. Maybe the Daruma Cannon. Why don't we just go over and see what the players are playing? Game number two, and I really want to see Typhoon by Rakta 
combo off of his Pendulum deck here. That's why, he br why we brought him to the feature match stage. We wanted to see what Pendulum is able to do now in 2022. And we see he at least started with his search at Bunbuku. And I think that's going to be maybe even the starting point here. Yep, he's instantly grabbing it and then putting it back into his hands. But no, I think Bunbuku would be a decent start. But no. Oh, he is starting off with the Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon. This is basically the same start that he had last game, but with other cards as well. So the Bunbuku will help him a lot. Yeah. It's, it's not even it's Rebellion a, the Dragon. Revolution, Revolution Dragon, but still. Oh, he has. We see Ash Blossom in the hand of yep. Aaron Uysal, which is not really a very popular card lately, but still For Aaron Uysal. Yeah, honestly. that was basically yep. always the starting point of your yep. deck, right? Yeah, I will start with Triple Ash Blossom and I should be good to go. Yep. The rest of the deck can <laughs> somehow find its way together. But, oh, um, he also has the Luster Dragon. I think I. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, wait. He, he, did not, he did not Ash the Revolution Dragon. No, no, he didn't. He didn't. He still has Ash Blossom in hand. I think he may just even let him combo all the way no. through because by looking at the head of Aaron, you see he has a very old but very powerful still board breaker that card being Raigeki. So and every board that Typhoon tries to put up here might be victim of a Raigeki. And this shows that Aaron is unprepared for Pendulum because one thing that this deck almost always does is number 38. Hope yep, Harbinger. Yep, Hope Harbinger might definitely come up here. But there's now the Ash Blossom on the Bunbuku normal summon. And let's see how hard that is going to stop Typhoon from comboing off here. No, I think this uh, Bunbuku was normal summoned earlier for Majesty's Pegasus, but Pegasus activated in scale. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely right. It must be the scale effect of Majesty Pegasus he's ashing. Which is interesting. So he, he actually seems to have some experience versus the Draco Slayer deck because he decided on a very specific point to ash there, and he didn't just throw the ash onto the first thing he saw. So that's kind of cool. But we are going for triple tactic talent, and yeah, that's going to draw him two cards as he's just shuffling his deck. Let's see. Was it bri that looked like double Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon? Ah, oh, that's not good. In this situation, the Revolution Dragon. I'm sorry, I'm correcting myself. <laughs> it's Revolution Dragon again. And then we are Pendulum Summoning now. I don't even know when I saw a Pendulum Summon for the last time on stream, to be honest. I mean, you for sure didn't see it in game one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. I think over in the US we had Draco Slayer being in the area, but. Um, here in, the, in, in Europe, I don't remember it. We searched for Sky Iris, and I mean, Sky Iris is a very, very yeah. strong field spell card. Majesty's Pegasus that has to discard a card now, which is the Cosmic Cyclone, does not really help at all at this moment. So, Ash Blossom was really good because now the scales are kind of have been kind of clocked. It's uh, five and two, so you can only summon level three or four. Which he did, to be fair, Monsters. but what's coming afterwards now? Now there is the Sky Iris, and he's getting room in his Pendulum scale again yeah. by popping the Luster Pendulum. So we don't have a tuner on the field right now. But that is maybe about to change. He's, he can search now for a card. I mean, that's for sure. That's what he he's can, doing, but that's... He already used his normal summon. Oh, and he's looking for a different scale, which is the... Odd Eyes, Odd Eyes Persona Dragon. It is the yes. Odd Eyes Persona Dragon. And that is a low scale. That's a scale one. And he cannot search this one for his monster effect because, quite honestly, that is a very high level. I don't think he's going to normal this out. Nope. And he already normal actually. Yep. So uh, it has to be for the scale effect. That is true. But this one only works if your opponent has targeted a odd eyes monster. I mean, I mean, this card is like only for scale purposes. So let's see what we are going with here. Are we ending on a Baguska or are we going for a Majesta? Or does Majesta even need it? It is the Baguska turning his own Bonbuku into the defense position. And we know that Aaron actually has Rageki to yeah. out that Baguska quite easily. So this end board coming out of Typhoon's hands here is not really it. And it's going over to Aaron and he's confidently drawing his fifth card in his hand now for turn and it is a pot of prosperity even which will help even more now this <laughs> couldn't get worse for typhoon i mean bunbuku is still protected from raigeki that is a plus <laughs> sure i will give you that but so, i don't know whether that bunbuku is going to be <laughs> the main selling point here in this game because it can get run over quite easily by every exorcist monster you could imagine that is true but 
it saves you some life points. Raigeki is coming down here. It's a one for one trade. <laughs> However, this Baguska is a really strong card that you want to keep on your field. So Raigeki not destroying the Bunbuku. Bunbuku might later be Pendulum summoned out and then can still surge another. And there is the Martha. He doesn't even need the Prosperity. He already has the Martha in hand. So Prosperity can then later on fetch for some non engine cards that could even protect his end board even more. Martha is a strong card. Indeed it is. It was really the turning point for the Exorcist strategy. It brought it to a whole different level. Not gonna lie, Power of the Elements, quite the powerful set. Indeed it was. And I mean, we had Exorcist in top 8 at YCS Utrecht, being Joshua that Osman. And um, he almost made it even further, but there his journey ended. Let's see how Exorcist can perform this weekend, because quite honestly, Axis Sister in theory is a pretty good matchup versus Telemans. That was always yeah. the matchup you wanted to play against because that deck non stop does stuff with the graveyard. So that would be absolutely the matchup you're targeting. So we are seeing a different see. Axis Sister. That's Caspitel indeed, yeah. He's going for the Caspitel. And Caspitel is the one that searches him a monster, which he's doing right there. So he just wants to get bodies onto the board. The good thing is. Aaron knows that there is not going to be any hand interaction by Typhoon because that is one of the things that Pendulum decks are known for. Yeah. They literally play zero cards because they want to use all of their resources to create a super good end board, but they don't want to sit on any hand interactions for the opponent's turn. Their end board is the main selling point, not the cards they keep at hand. That is true. The only cards that were really good as hand interactions were the Bestials, and those are not strong versus Exosister. Nope. We have Pax as well, searching Stella. So the whole Exorcist family now almost together. And which is the one he's normal? He's actually going for Stella as his normal summon of choice. That is bringing out the Sophia as well. And Sophia triggers to actually give him a draw. Look, he's not going to resolve the Prosperity this turn. He rather wants the draw effect of Exorcist Sophia there. I mean, he has all the cards that he wanted. He can keep the Prosperity for the next turn. Very, very much true. And Typhoon sits there. He and opened now we're up. Going for the Michaelis. Yes, he opened up with one Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon, and then he drew into two more with his talents. That was really unfortunate. He couldn't combo on. And yeah, now he sits there again, facing two Exorcist Exit monsters. I remember his uh, YCS final in uh, Rimini, where he opened up with a triple unicorn. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't this invite him to the feature match area anymore. No, absolutely <laughs> not. This is bad luck for him, apparently, with Pendulum Dex. And we're even getting rid of his last scale now. So Typhoon is left with no scales. And I can already spoil you, there's not going to be any monsters left after yeah. this turn either. Maybe the Sky Iris is going to help him, though, because that would be able to activate the effect next turn again, right? Now we have the big boss monster of the Exorcist archetype, which is Exorcisters. Magnifica. Yeah. Two Exceed monsters were sacrificed to get her onto the board. So it makes sense that, it's, that it is Exorcist Terrace, right? Yeah. Because multiple sisters combined made her. Yeah, and it really is a boss monster. That is really the one you're trying to go for turn one. And now it is turn two, but he wasn't interrupted in any way by Typhoon because that Raigeki instantly took care of the Bagushka. So, yeah. One more set card. Even maybe one more? Nope. Oh. Of course, not even the Sky Iris will stay there for Typhoon, so he has to rely on the four cards he will start his turn with. We know two of them are Odd Eyes oh. Revolution Dragons. Oh, and he drew into another Odd Eyes card, right? Or was he it drew the into the Bunbuku, oh, which it could Bunbuku. actually be okay. I mean, resource-wise, it's not the best to have this Bunbuku, but it actually enables him some more plays by searching for the Majesty Draco Slayer, which is always treated as a Magic Spectre card, just in case you were wondering why this is a target for Bunbuku. Yeah, indeed he searches it out. And now, again, his hand does not only consist out of Odd Ice cards anymore. <laughs> Before that, we had double Revolution Dragon and the Persona Dragon. Let's see what he can make out of it. It looks like really, it really looks like he's trying to come up with something here. Yeah. He, this is a situation where he just has to freestyle, if you ask me. He's not going to perform a regular combo. He just has to come up with something on the spot. We saw that from Chris LeBlanc in the first round featured match. Yeah. He was very good at that. He was showcasing how 
good of a player he is. And I know that Typhoon is a very good player as well, so I'm pretty sure he could come up with something here. Typhoon is a fantastic player indeed, and now it is really all about this turn. Can he get off the Luster and Majesty combo? So, he is using Magnifica on activation of the cards or activation of the effect? No, I think it was activation of the effect. Effect, yeah. And it is now banished. So Magnifica is there laying without a target or without a material to activate the second effect. That's true, yeah. So maybe Typhon can actually play here for a little bit. He's considering his options. Persona, Dre Persona is a one scale, right? We checked on Persona being a one yeah. scale. So Lassa Pendulum and Persona would work for a Pendulum Summon yeah, in some way. Basti can only Pendulum Summon out of one. Oh yeah. I forgot the Master, <laughs> master Rule change. You would only be able to summon to the extra monster zone right now because there are no Link monsters pointing to any other zones. Therefore, he could only yeah, only summon out one Bubuku or one Draco Slayer. So Typhoon is actually... Okay, so he can Pendulum summon a fair amount of cards from hand. Indeed he and can. now he's going for activation of Persona Dragon. He has the Bubuku on the field. And we and know that there is exists a return he has set. And now it's the time for Aaron to activate that. It's probably going to hit the Persona Dragon. Yes, uh, Typhoon actually told me before the deck profile that we made it. Oh, and it is the handshake. This deck is lacking low scales. And Aaron actually wins the featured match in round 2. 2-0 over Typhoon. First round, we had almost an underdog defeating the big yeah. name. Chris LeBlanc really had to work for his victory in round two, in round one. And now in round two, a swift 2-0 by our Absolutely. underdog. Really big congrats to Aaron Uysal, keeping himself in the tournament. We have seen Ash Blossom perform really well. Ash Blossom actually Who decided this game. Typhoon told me before, yeah, there are so few hand traps played this deck struggle, struggles versus Ash Blossom in particular, yes. because it does not only stop searching, it also stops you from popping your own scales. Who would have thought? It wasn't the side deck even, by the yeah. way. Ash Blossom and side deck really coming in clutch versus Pendulum. You can't make this up. Absolutely not. Who would have thought that Exorcister is a deck that beats Pendulum, right? Because I didn't. It is actually designed to beat yeah. all the Tealman decks in the room. And then he gets faced, uh, he gets paired against a Pendulum deck. And look at the first two combo boards that Typhoon brought up. Yeah. Game one. Was there even any negate no, or anything Fenrir, on board? Fenrir pass. It, I mean, that's some kind of interaction, but it didn't do too much in the end. And then in the second game, Baguska would be a very valid uh, win option because it Ash usually Ragegi. buys you time. Ash Regeki. Ash Regeki in Ash game Ragegi. number two coming down. So no chance there for Typhoon yeah. to fight back. Aaron really, really showcasing that Axel System might still be a contender. Yeah. It didn't top at all in YC's Pasadena, but maybe it's comeback time again. Maybe it's coming in here. I gotta be honest, I would have really loved to see or to even showcase on stream a combo of the so yes. powerful Pendulum deck. For this sure. is a, a really clutch deck. We also have other top contenders on this deck in this tournament. I can tell you that. I won't tell you any names, <laughs> but uh, there are some other YCS finalists oh, on yeah. this deck as well. For sure, for sure. Some really, really interesting choices all around in the field. We will be able to, to show you some other very cool decks. It's not going to be Ishizu Tielemans all day long. We have uh, some good decks yeah. already. We, we're like, you can imagine that we're going around like, like spies of between course. rounds, all looking the at the tables, looking through the decks and everything. And so we want to really make sure to actually present you some really, really cool decks and to bring them into the feature match area. And I think, I mean, we, we wanted to feature the Pendulum deck right here. And then it did not even play versus the most popular deck. It actually no. played versus Exorcist, so we could basically showcase both of no. the decks. And then it would have actually taken maybe another turn because Typhoon got to start and he had the Necro Valley, which would have been so good versus these Tierlement decks. Absolutely, yep. That is indeed true. And it is, of course, a little bit unfortunate, though, for Typhoon Byraktar because it he's is. starting 0-2 into this tournament. I mean, you're having a whole CS and uh, you are actually just out of a tournament after two rounds already. I mean, your tiebreakers are not going to be too good and it's no, not really the best it's start. A tough one. But let's speak about winners, Rubber. Let's see what Aaron Oysal has to say in his winner's interview with that. Take it over. Hello, guys. Yes, I am joined by Aaron here, who's just won his first round 
of this YCS Dortmund against none other than a previous German champion. So that's that's got to be a pretty good feeling. How are you feeling having that as your first win of the tournament? I'm happy. Yeah. I'm, yes. So talk to us a little bit about your deck. You're running Exosister, which is pretty good. You've also got some of the Ishizu cards in there, which we're seeing, frankly, quite a lot of. And also in your side deck, nine trap cards. Yeah. So can you talk to us a bit about your deck choices? Uh, I use Exosister because I think it has a great matchup against Tier Elements. And the Ishizu cards are quite good because the deck has consistency issues. And if you add six level fours to it, you can do rank four plays way more often. And if the Tier Elements player who always wants to mill with Kalbeck and Agido mills in your deck, they see that you also play the Ishizu cards and you stop his play. So it's amazing. Were you concerned? Because obviously the two decks that we saw were kind of almost in a way chosen to make sure it combated Tierman Ishizu kind of decks. So when you weren't up against that and you were up against another deck that combated that, were you nervous? Uh, yes, a little bit. But I think the Exosister Pendulum matchup is pretty good because I can always banish his scales and he doesn't even get to play. So, yeah. Well, we're going to talk about that in a moment because that's how you ended game two. But let's go through game one, a decisive two-game victory. So there was a kind of weak start for Typhoon there because he passed straight over to you. You were into Pot of Prosperity. You had Mikaelis and Banish the Pendulums. So talk to us a bit about some of the things going through your mind during that first game because you were pretty dominant in that round. Uh, yes, I just wanted to do the standard Exosister plays, but I also misplayed in the battle phase because he attacked my Mikaelis and I didn't realize that it was Druid War. My, my mind was on Magnamut and I didn't use my Mikaelis quick effect to banish it and even get a quicker win. Was that just a, a brain moment? My first feature match, maybe I was nervous, but yeah. Well, it doesn't matter about the nerves because you came out on top there. So we'll talk about the round two or the game two there because he kicked off with some of the odd eyes stuff. You were choosing to ash very carefully because there were a couple of things you could have ash. Why did you choose what you did choose to ash? I don't know if it was the right thing, but my friend was always playing Pendulum, so I knew what to ask, but I'm still not sure if it was 100%. Well, like I said, you've won, so it must have done you some yeah, wonders. It's still improve, it's still so, improve. Yeah. Always learning, that's what we like to hear. You had the Martha in hand, so you had a very strong start. The Raigeki dealt with the Baguska. You were holding on to Prosperity for when you needed it. So you really had all the resources. You got into Magnifica, and then it was just that return here at the end that just really sealed the scoop. So you seemed pretty confident. Were you feeling confident the whole round? Yes, yeah. because of return here. I knew if I get it, he can put his scales and I can interrupt it, and yeah. That's exactly what happened. Well, congratulations on getting your first win against, like I said, none other than a previous German champion. So that's pretty exciting. Best of luck, because you're probably going to be coming up against a lot of those Ishizu Tierlement decks. So. Almost certainly at this point. So good luck against those. Good luck against anything else you go up against. Don't go anywhere, guys, because we have our third round coming up very soon.